Greetings and welcome to this episode of how to create things in SolidWorks. Today we are going to work on a Geneva wheel project. Now this particular episode assumes that you've already done a number of solid modeling exercises and so we will skip through some of those and go more towards the assembly side of things. This Geneva wheel mechanism translates rotational motion from this driver into intermittent motion by this Geneva wheel. In order to make it, most of the parts are pretty simple with the exception of this Geneva wheel. So we're going to open up that part and I'm just going to show you now, all I did was use one sketch to create the whole thing. And the first part was just done with a construction line at 30 degrees to horizontal. And it was constructed using just a few of these dimensions. But then a circular sketch pattern was used to translate it around to all six locations. In so doing, it was made uh, symmetric about those three axes, and it was fairly easy to uh, copy it through to make that happen. There are other ways of doing this, maybe using multiple features, but in this case it makes the most sense to use just a single sketch. Once that was completed, we needed to make the other parts, and the other parts are very simple. A pin, a shaft of a certain size, this is the ground link that connects the two. Uh, takes the place of the ground or some other machine that they're connected to and the locking disc that interacts with the Geneva wheel the crank that is used to drive it and again here is the entire assembly so in order to create this assembly we will want to make a new assembly wants to know if we want to make an assembly, I say sure. And I'm going to start with the two sub-assemblies. First sub-assembly is pretty easy. We use the cylindrical shaft. There it is. There's our cylindrical shaft. And then to insert this component, the next one, I'm just going to click on here. And we're going to insert the Geneva wheel. And it just kind of floats out there in space, nothing to worry about. Um, it's hard to tell where it is, so I'll just put it over here so we can easily access it. And all we're going to do is mate couple of the important aspects of it. So you can see that this surface goes inside here. So we just could click on that surface, that surface, and it knows to do that. Once we're done with that, it considers it a concentric mate. That's fine. Make sure you hit this green check mark, otherwise you might get confused as to where you're at. But notice how it's not exactly where we want it. We want this surface to be up on this surface. And usually it's pretty smart. We're still in the mate phase here, so I'm going to click on this surface and go up here, and lo and behold, it's exactly the way we want it. Don't forget to click on your green check mark. And in fact, our subassembly is completed. So I'll just keep this as SM1, and we're going to make a new assembly. These two that we're making are sub-assemblies. And we're 
going to start again with the cylindrical shaft. Just click anywhere in here. And then we're going to put on top of that the locking disc. So I'm going to insert a component. It's going to be the locking disc, which I happen to have already in memory because I opened up all these parts. That can help out a lot because then you'll find it over here. Otherwise, you'll have to browse for the parts. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to mate that surface with that surface. It knows that they are concentric. Hit the green check mark. And that surface with this surface. Put those together. And that's pretty well established. We're going to insert another component, which is the crank. Well, we're going to have to have we're going to have a certain amount of difficulty here. We'll see why eventually. So here I'm going to mate again this surface with this surface. Now, if you'll notice, we go to our assembly. That crank goes on underneath here. And that pin stays at the same level as the locking disc. So we'll go over there, get back to ASIM2. And we're going to... Uh, see, it's supposed to go underneath. So what I want to do, make sure I hit that green check mark, then mate this top to this bottom. Ah, uh, that's better. All right, good to go with that. The problem is, if I move this crank, it doesn't bring the locking disc with it. And if I move the locking disc, it doesn't bring the crank with it. The locking disc and the crank need to be uh, assembled together. And a big question is, how do we do that? There's no specific point here that can be on a point there or a nice face or anything like that. Well, if you can't figure it out, then you're forgetting all the great reasons that we've been working on design intent from the get-go. We made this locking disc here with front, top, and right planes. And that front plane goes right down the middle, just right where we would want the uh, crank to go. So let's look at the crank. Does it have the same thing? Hey, look, if we are able to mate those two, and we would have had to think about that at the very beginning of our design, then we're all set. We don't have to do too much. It's pretty easy. Just click on Mate. I'm going to take that front plane, which I've already selected. And I'm going to go to the front plane of the other one. And voila. They are going to work together. So now all that works together. To finish off this subassembly, We'll simply insert the small pin. And again, use another mate for this surface to this surface. And then mate that to here. And that will do it for the driver subassembly. Now to make the full assembly, make another assembly here. That's going to end up being SM3. And remember, uh, an assembly can take either parts or even subassemblies. So we're going to first make sure you put the ground link in. Otherwise, we've got to go back and take care of some other things. So make sure the ground link goes first. And if you'll notice, it comes up with an F here. That means it's fixed. The first part is usually uh, what you want to have as stable. So it uh, automatically fixes that part in space. Now that I have the ground link in 
this assembly, I'm going to insert other components. Now in order to do that, I need to click here, and the components that I have in memory will show up here. But in order to get them in here and put them into the assembly, they need to be saved first. So I'll show you them in this situation. I'm going to save this. Right now it's an SM3. I'm going to save as. And here are my two sub-assemblies. I saved them in the meantime. I didn't have to show you all that. And Geneva mechanism full assembly. There we go. So now that shows up here, and now I'll continue to insert my components. First one I'll do is the driver subassembly. Put that out here. And I'm going to mate that part of the shaft with the internal here. And then that with this. Then I'll insert another component, which is the um, Geneva wheel subassembly. And I will make that part of the shaft with that. Click the green check mark. And here we go. Now this just happened to come in all nice set up like this because I set up the planes appropriately. But these two you should check to make sure that they both rotate. Now notice how this is rotating right through the other solid model. Yes, it doesn't know the difference. We will show it how to see the difference, but uh, most of the time you'll be working with parts that can actually run right through each other. So here is the Geneva mechanism in its assembled form. It may help to change the part colors. change it into a nice pretty blue Now it's easier to see the different parts.